Hey everyone, the aftermath of the US election was a sordid mess and one in which the media's analysis was about as neutral as listening to Jimmy Hill commentate on an England game against Germany. Except of course these days it would be former crisp salesman turned football pundit Gary Lineker offering political insight on Twitter. I guess just like Jimmy Hill, many of the people who voted for Joe Biden died several years ago. At the time of the recording, though, Mr Biden has been announced as the clear winner, although there are a number of very real and deeply concerning anomalies within the voting counts, which I'll come to in a bit. But from day one, the BBC, CNN and all their comrades were actively pursuing the route that it's done. Nothing to see here. Everyone move along so we can get Donald Trump out of the White House. And they can claim editorial neutrality for all they want, but I've seen Tony the Tiger be more neutral about Frosties. You know, the removal of President Trump is like a religion for many people, most of whom would be unable to actually provide examples of policies or actions that have affected them personally. In Britain, of course, it was normally the sort of people that used to protest outside the US Embassy in part because, at least until recently, it was located around the corner from Selfridges, you know, so they could make a day of it, do a bit of protesting, then jump on the tube at Bond Street and head back to their six-bedroom townhouse. At the heart of this whole debacle, though, has been a number of highly dubious counts in key counties, many of which were Trump strongholds that switched to Biden by a landslide. At least on the ballots that were asking about the White House, remember there were Senate races and congressional districts up for grabs too. And indeed, one of the many pieces of evidence in favour of the alleged vote rigging is that the Democrats did so poorly in those congressional and Senate races. You know, typically, the vote counts are roughly the same because people cast for the same party on each of the slips of paper. Yet in many cases here, there are counties that voted overwhelmingly for Mr Biden, yet also returned Republican congressmen and Trump-supporting senators by a larger margin than last time around. To accompany all this is the electronic voting machines that have been shown in a handful of recounts to have over-tallied Mr Biden's votes by thousands, although we've been assured that those are one-off glitches, yet that same software is being used nationally in 30 states, and court cases are currently being brought to prevent any further recounts, almost as if there's something to hide. That counting software, by the way, is made by a company called Dominion Voting Systems. They previously donated millions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation. And all things considered, I've got about as much faith in those numbers being true and accurate as I do of Mr Biden being able to recall what his own name is without a teleprompter or writing it down on a slip of paper. And the press coverage of the maths, that reminds me of when a kid once asked me if I could help them find the number 10 on a calculator. Nonetheless, for me, the big takeaway is that in amidst all the talk of the White House, the main story was lost, and that's that the Democrats didn't take over the legislature, they didn't get big majorities in the Congress, and they didn't take over the Senate. So Mr Biden and his supporters can talk all they want about raising taxes or banning fracking or rebalancing the Supreme Court, but they can't actually do any of it. If Joe Biden decides to make the climate the central policy issue and sign the Paris Accords, the Republican Senate can turn around and reassure the public that they're going to be doing nothing to enforce it. And if Democrat cities were expecting a blank check to bail them and their friends out, they might find that the bailout gets calculated by those same dubious ballot counting machines. You know, there's a real sense that places like Chicago and New York were purposely run into the ground in recent months so that Joe Biden could preside over a Democrat-led bailout and a revival that conclusively proved to everyone that the country did better when Democrats were in charge. As it is, the one thing you can say is that Democrat politicians must be in incredible physical shape because that's an awful lot of stretching the truth and jumping to conclusions. For now, I guess Mr Trump remains in office for another 70 days or thereabouts, so let's see what he spends his time doing, or what surprises he has in store for his successor to have to inherit. Time to grab some popcorn, I guess, and sit back. Anyway, see you next week. Shall you click subscribe?